One of the most detrimental things you can do to yourself is to compare yourself to the people around you. I don't care if it's your brother or sister or somebody in your homestead or if it's somebody on television screen or if it's somebody on your phone screen. Whenever you place yourself in a position where you are comparing your own journey to somebody else's, you will suffer. And this is something I wish I knew a lot earlier within my own journey. Now, obviously, I'm thankful to know it now, and I'm thankful to live in a place where I do my very best to not compare myself, to not compare my journey, to not compare my metrics, right? Like I'm on social media, I'm on YouTube, and it's so easy to just look at somebody else's likes and to look at somebody else's comment to like ratio or comment to view ratio. It's so easy for us in this world to compare ourselves to everybody around us. And we have a multitude of tools that can help us in that suffering. And so for whoever is out there right now who is struggling in the space of comparison, I have a few tips I want to give you. But I believe that the most important thing for us to first realize is that we are worthy, right? I'm not here because I want to sell you this hoodie, even though if you want to buy one, you can go ahead and do, do so. But you are worthy. You are worthy as you are, not because of what you do or do not do, but you're worthy simply because you have that inherent worth within you. It is ingrained as a part of your being from birth, right? We don't look at a baby and say, is this baby worthy? Is this baby worthy? Let's see how they behave. Let's see how they act. No, it doesn't matter if the baby pukes or if the baby poops all up in the diaper. Like we are still going to treat that child as if they are the most precious thing, at least for the same people on this earth. Right. For the same parents and the same you know, family members, you're going to treat that infant. You're going to treat that child with pretty much unconditional love. And it's unfortunate that at a certain point in our lives, we begin to be trained into this conditionality of love. So a trade-off, right? If you do this, then I'll do that. If, if you show up in this way, I'll give you affection. If you show up in this way, I'll give you attention. If you don't, then I'm going to give you no attention or I'll give you no affection. And so we start to adapt to this way of, of conditionality within the love that we receive as well as the love that we give. And so this is like the foundational point of when we start to compare ourselves, we're looking for what's going to get me seen, what's going to get me heard, what's going to get me loved, right? It's easy in this social media space to see that, but in our everyday lives, we might not notice it as clearly. And it's happening in every space in our lives. If you walk into a gym, you're immediately thinking to yourself, oh man, you know, that dude's way bigger. Oh, that chick, like, man, she got the body is rocking. Look at me. I'm walking in here looking like Stumpy McDumpy. Like, you know, we're already criticizing ourselves in this comparative game. And you can't win on either side, by the way, y'all. Like, you can tell yourself that, oh, I'm better looking than this half of the population. And as soon as you do that, now you think about who's better looking than me, right? If I think to myself, man, I'm the funniest dude in this room. As soon as somebody walks in, who was funnier? Like, I think I'm hilarious. Now we got uh, Chris Rock walks in the room. Dave Chappelle walks in the room. Now what? Now where's my social status? Now, how do I feel accepted? How do I feel, quote unquote, loved in that space? That is the detriment of comparison, now, I would be a fool if I did not admit that this world does have its ways of comparing. This world does create certain metrics that say, are you in? Are you out? Are you good? Are you bad? Yet those aren't based in reality. They're based in social conditioning and programming. And I know some people like to say it's our biology, right? But sociology and, and psychology always trumps biology, meaning the environment that you grow up in. And the mindsets that are programmed into you, conditioned into you, are more powerful than biology. That's why people will go against their own biology in order for them to fulfill a story that they've been telling themselves, right? A person will literally be diseasing their body. They will be uh, pouring toxins into their body simply to fulfill something psychological or sociological. Why do you think people literally drink poisons in order to be accepted into a social group? Right. That shows us right there. So we do live in societal structures that tell us that in order for you to be deemed as worthy, in order for you to be deemed as a somebody, you must measure up to these certain markers. Right. Like for us as men, I know that there are, you know, this multitude of, of different titles and labels are now given it alpha male and high value male and this, that and a third. Whereas basically, if you have these certain criteria, you are now deemed as worthy. And so you will start to compare yourself to the people around you. And I know it's the exact same for women. I know it's the exact same for anybody that we have this set of 
structures and systems set in place in order for us to, you know, check off these boxes to say that we are adequate, that we are good enough. And this is a, it's a death sentence for most of us, for every single one of us. I'm not even going to say for most of us, because it doesn't matter if you're checking every box, you're still going to feel that you have lesser than or lack something, or you're always going to feel as if you're having to, to keep up that image, right? You always have to feel as if you're, you're the, the most good looking person in the room, the richest person in the room, the most charismatic. You always feel as if you have to be on and that in and of itself is suffering. And trust me, I know, though I may not have checked a lot of those boxes, right, just off of my own genetics, um, there were certain boxes where I was like, okay, I know I can be, you know, the most entertaining in the room. And sure, maybe I was, but then now I felt I always had to be on. And then I was always watching out to see if somebody more entertaining than me. And it, it was uh, basically the basis for my own adequacy, for my own level of security. And so, of course, I was deeply insecure. And this is the reality that most of us have to start to face about ourselves is like, what is the agenda? Like, what is the purpose? What is the intention behind our comparison? And when we look deeper at the root of it, it always comes down to, I want to feel that I am worthy of love. That's where it really is rooted. And we have to understand this before we can even start to engage with those mentalities or those belief systems that keep us in that structural place. We have to acknowledge that. I believe 51% of the way, sometimes 49, but usually 51% of the way is just acknowledging and acceptance, right? When I'm able to acknowledge the true reason behind something as opposed to hiding, right? When I'm able to tell myself that I am deeply insecure and these things I'm insecure about, or I feel like I'm not adequate, I feel like I'm not good enough, then I'm actually moved towards that solution. And the solution becomes relatively easy because now I'm making choices based on a decision of I want something different for myself. You know, an example, when I was in the quote unquote manosphere red pill space, I couldn't accept that the reason why I resonated with that content was because I felt inadequate. I felt like I was not good enough. I felt like I was um, a nobody per se, and so I looked for ways to justify those feelings by pointing the figure at women and saying, they're the problem, they're the issue, right? While simultaneously doing everything I could to get their attention, to get their validation. I was coming from a broken place. And it's only when I accepted that this was a result of, of my brokenness. This was or not my brokenness, but this was a result of the wounds that I had. A lot of them being childhood wounds, right? They weren't even relational wounds. They weren't wounds that were formed in my you know, interpersonal relationships as a young adult or as a teenager, but these were belief systems I got from a kid, from my parental system, like from my parental figures, from the family structure, from the uh, tra tradition in, in Africa where I grew up, where it was, you're not adequate, you're not good enough until you do certain things. My religious background, which was, I believe, the foundation of my inadequate belief system of you're not good enough for this God who has created you, who supposedly created you out of love, but you're not good enough for this God until you do these certain things, until you follow these certain subset of rules or this one rule, until you accept this you know, path to God, you're not going to be worthy of that God. And so again, we really have to come down to this foundational element of why am I comparing myself and why does it matter to look outside? Because again, if all we try to do is correct it, I'm going to stop myself from comparing, stop myself from comparing, stop. That's not going to do anything because you haven't faced the root issue. We always have to get down to the root. It's like if you're trying to, you know, eradicate an addiction from your life, you can't start at the addiction. You can't say, well, you know, I just love crack. It's not at the crack level. It's deeper than crack. It's un beneath, below those cracks, right? Below the surface of those cracks is where you'll find why it is that you are gravitating towards some type of suppressant, some type of um, coping mechanism per se. And so again, we start there and then we move into, okay, so how do I actually, right? So what does it actually look like for me to overcome this comparative nature? And for me, what has been the most powerful and transformative, especially being, you know, I was a very judgmental person, though you wouldn't see it on the outside, but due to my Christian programming, it's like we judge everybody, right? In those spaces, um, you are not good enough. You're not adequate. This person is this, this person. So everything in my life had become judgment and judgment is a disguise for insecurity, right? I'm trying to project what I feel about me onto other people. And so the most powerful thing that I did was to, again, observe myself in the judgments and to see where it came from, to acknowledge that. And I had to start sitting with myself and, you know, writing like, 
what are the actual insecurities? Like, what do I believe about myself? And basically, like, what are the lies? Because that's what you're actually getting out. Um, meditation was a powerful, powerful tool that I used. And, you know, we oftentimes think of meditation in two ways. We think it's this like woo woo spiritual thing or we think it's, you know, just for like functionality and performance. So there's one school of thought which says, you know, for focus and clarity and productivity, meditation. And yes, it is that. And then there's the other the spiritual circle says to tap into the divine and the oneness of life. It is that as well. But where I find that it works best is within the emergence is in creating such a deep level of clarity as far as what voice is which. Right. One is your programming and one is the um, the true voice. The programming and the conditioning is based in fear and your true voice is rooted in love. I'm not talking about like a, just a romantic type of love. I mean, it's rooted in power. It's rooted in truth. Right. So the, the initial the programming of the conditioning is always going to be telling you a very different message. You need to do this. That person is worse than you. That person is better than you. Oh, you're not enough. That voice right there or even the voice of doubt. That is a program belief system. The other voice, the clarity, is the true voice. But sometimes they could seem as if they are switched because, again, we've been programmed to believe the lie. We've been programmed to believe that the lie is the truth. And the lie being you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you're not deserving, you're not adequate. Those are lies. You are loved. You are powerful. You are powerful beyond measure. You are creators of reality. And if this offends you, it shows you how deeply that, that programming has been rooted within you. You are a creator in this life. You, nobody else is doing it. You are doing it. And it is your unconsciousness, your unawareness of this reality that is basically leading you into a place where you just feel as if, well, I'm nobody until I do this, that, and the third, or until I look this certain way, or until I have these certain things, right? So again, once you get into this place of clarity of these two voices, and for me, meditation is powerful, and it's not like lotus position home. Like I sit in a chair comfortably and I just observe and I allow myself to settle. You know, it's, it's about stimuli being cut off. Obviously, it's a very, very powerful thing. And allowing yourself to settle into that original state of being. We are human beings, not human doings for a reason. Our natural state is beingness. We create from a sense of being and then we do and carry things out. So when we do transition into the doing, it's literally selecting Am I going to choose the old program or the new conditioning, right? Am I going to choose the old belief system or the new uh, belief system? Now, I wasn't intending to use this video as, you know, a breakdown of every single process that I've used throughout my journey. But for you, it might look different. You know, it might look different for every single one of us what a journaling exercise. Maybe for you, it's visualization of like seeing yourself in different scenarios and seeing yourself as a different person within those situations and scenarios. We have to create a new program for ourselves or at least strip the old programming in order to allow the true self to show itself, right? Again, comparative nature comes from a belief that I am not good enough as I am. Therefore, I need something to relate to in order for others to see me as good enough. I need to take somebody else's measurement and use it upon myself in order for them to see me as good enough. And as soon as you start making a decision that you're not going to base your own belief systems on what somebody else has perceived of you, then your life begins to shift. Then you can start stepping into a different version of self. But that decision has to be made to be consciously aware and truthful. Be honest with yourself. Don't run from it. Don't hide from it. There's no purpose in running or hiding anymore. You know, I know a lot of us have spent a majority of our lives hiding from ourselves and it's time for us to show who we truly are. So um, that's that for right now. If you guys want more on this subject, let me know in the comment section below and I can break down different actual exercises. But you guys, I cannot, I cannot tell you the or I cannot define for you in words alone how powerful simply being is, being in a space of meditation and how much you're going to get from that. It changed my entire life. The reason I'm the person I am right now is because of my meditative practices. And it's not because I became some, you know, um, enlightened guru. It's because I finally got to know who I was for the first time again and again and again. And once I learned who that one was, I could more easily let go of the other, the, the false self, right? The egoic mind or just the programmed brain. So that being said, a guilt-free plug. I want to let you guys know that I have published my very first book. It's called Doing Me Guilt-Free. Doing Me Guilt-Free 
breaking free from people pleasing and unleashing your true personal power. Make sure to get yourself a copy. I would recommend a hard copy because I mean, it's, it's such an easy read. Like I broke it down in a way where you can just literally fly through this thing. And it's the type of book that will really stay with you throughout a lifetime. So it's a lifetime investment, you know, um, to me and any, anybody else who's gotten a copy. By the way, I bought the copy myself. I didn't get a free copy because I wrote the book. I had to buy myself two of them. You know, there's a larger like manuscript version and this one just for like reading purposes. So make sure to get yourself a copy of one of those by clicking the description link in the description below. Don't click the description. I ain't going to do much. But if you click the link in the description, you'll be led to that book on Amazon. You get yourself a copy. So appreciate you guys for tuning in. Namaste. Namaskar.